Father always sends us a second witness, a third witness, a fourth witness, witnesses all through His Word. And if you don't check out the witnesses, each one of them, let's say like if you're studying the book of Revelation, there is more written about the millennium and actually what happens in the book of Revelation in many other places of the Bible. And it's your second witness whereby you get a better picture. I, I want to pick up, if we may, in Jeremiah chapter 1, a prophet that God himself picked even before the foundations of this world. And then while he was still in the mother's womb, named him a prophet. Hey, you can ride with a guy like that. You can trust a guy like that. Why? Because God did. And God still does. So let, let's check out Jeremiah just a little bit. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1, that word of wisdom from our father. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Anathoth is an interesting town. It was a priest town. It means answer to prayer. So you're going to get an answer to a lot of prayers in our study here in this great book of, Anna, of Jeremiah concerning Anathoth. Now, skip on down to verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, who is he a prophet to? To the nations, to everyone. In other words, it means it pertains to everyone. Verse 6, Then said I, oh, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. I mean, he was a young person. Wasn't well, he, he didn't feel he was well informed, didn't have all that much experience. Verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. When, when you think of yourself as a child, you're forgetting about what was. You're forgetting about the first earth age. You're forgetting about what kind of experience you might have gained there that's tucked way back in your mind as far as experience goes that father hasn't forgotten he knows whether he can count on you or you're a wimp okay he knows all about you and i guarantee you he doesn't choose somebody that he knows he cannot trust that's why he chose jeremiah can do type individual and uh, he's going to whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And, and so it is. Verse 8, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to, to deliver thee, saith the Lord. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I do not understand one of God's elect that trembles. He's with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He will always be with you. So, what have you got to fear? But fear itself. God is real. And He knows you. He knew you from before. He knows what kind of experiences you had there. He knows how He can count on you, or if He can't. Okay. So, be that as it may. I, if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, I assure you, God probably knows you can cut it. You're a can-do type person. And um, verse eight, be, be, yeah, verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. You know, it's too bad that teachers and God the elect can't really take that word serious. What did he say he put in his mouth? Joe Blow's words, a little word from down the road here, I heard a minister say. No, he said, my words. And that's what he meant. And any time you start messing with something besides the word of God, then you're looking for trouble. Let it be God's word. 
and let man's dreamed up imaginations fall by the wayside because that's where they're going. He put in Jeremiah's mouth God's Word. That's why we can trust Jeremiah. That's why we, when we use him as a second witness, we can count on him. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. And so it is. That's what this word is about. And the nations are rumbling today. Oh, my, are they rumbling. But this word supersedes them all. Why? Because God is still on the throne. God is still in control. And you either trust him or you don't. Okay? I feel sorry for you if you don't, because he knows exactly what he's doing. So, how does he put his word in your mouth? By your study of that word. By your staying focused on the Word of God instead of the traditions of man. Now, I want you to go to Revelation. Hold your place here in Jeremiah. As a matter of fact, you can pick up Jeremiah 51 if you want to. And just hold it there. And then go on to Revelation. I'm going to be switching back and forth to give you the second witness. So... um, Use a, a little ingenuity and um, hold, hold your Bible where you can flip, okay? Because we're going to cross-reference here. <clears throat> we're going to find out about a second witness. Revelation chapter... I'm, I'm going to tell you, before, when every time we change, for you that take notes, I'm going to tell you the verses we will be using so that you can write that down and then listen to me so you don't get sidetracked, Okay? A lot of times if you're writing notes, you're not staying focused. And I do want you to stay focused on this message, this second witness. So we're going to Revelation chapter 17, and we're going to cover only verse 1. And verse 1 reads, of Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Now the trumps and the seals have dumped, and here we are. And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee, going to show what? The judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, I want you to settle something in your mind coming right out the gate. If you go to verse 15, just as a side check, you'll find out what the waters are, that this whore is sitting on the confusion. It's people. In other words, she's sitting on a lot of people that are deceived, and quite frankly, what are they deceived about? Rapture? They think they're going to fly away? They're going to accept the first Messiah that comes along because they're ignorant of God's Word? But God has put that Word in your mouth, in your mind, whereby you know better. But here she is sitting on this water. Now, we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 51, and we're going to cover verses 13 through 20. 13 through 20. 51, chapter, chapter 51, Jeremiah, verse 13, listen to the witness. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, that's many people, ab- abundant in treasures, thine end is come. And the measure of thy covetousness. It's, you know, a lot of people worry about what, well, what's the one world government system going to do? I can tell you nothing. Okay. It's not going to last very long. Why? Because we win. We have the victory. This is the second witness to it. This simply means all those people that ride in on Babylon, which, what does Babylon mean? It means confusion. They are confused. And that confusion is riding upon the people And it's not going to last, okay? Now, verse uh, 14. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. And so it shall be. Okay. Verse 15. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom. 
and hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Who do you want to ride with? Do you understand that God created Satan? Do you want to go with something he created or with the, with the Father himself? Only an, an unwise person would say, well, I'd rather serve, I'd rather worship the creation rather than the creator. That won't get you very far, my friend. I mean, he, he, his majesty is supreme. <clears throat> Verse 16, and when he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, peoples, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the earth, ends of the earth to maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth wind out of his treasure. He even controls the weather when he wants to. Okay. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Think so. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molded image is falsehood. A bunch of lies. And do you know something? When you hear it come over your television, you know it's a bunch of lies. You know it's not going to happen. You know that it's false, that it is not of our Heavenly Father. Verse 18. They are vanity, empty. The work of errors in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. And they're certainly going to. Okay. Verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. That's God's elect. All twelve tribes. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. That's who you want to follow. Why? Because he's the winner. He's in control. He's got it made. And when you ride with him, guess what? You've got it made. And what, what does having it made mean? It means you're fit to help somebody. That you have compassion. That even now and during the millennium, you can lead somebody to the true water, living water. Meaning that you care. That's why you got it made, because you have compassion. And that you are true and focused on the Word of God. Verse 20, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Now, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 17, verses 2 and 4. Hold your place here. Don't lose it. We'll be back. <clears throat> God uses whom he will as a battle axe. I mean, can he count on you? You ever thought of that? I think he can and I think that all he has to do is let you know, and that's what the Holy Spirit is about. So we live in perilous times right now. There are rumors and shakings all around the world. But this word reigns supreme. So we return then to 17. We're going to go with verses 2 through 4. 17, 2 through 4, book of Revelations, verse 2 reads, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication... That's to say, the deceived ones and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. That means the lies and the deception of any moment now. You're going to fly away. You're going to worship the false Christ. He's coming and you don't know better. That's what happens to some people. That's why the word fornication is used here. It's idolatry, actually. Verse 3 so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's the one world system of deception, headed by none other than Satan himself as the dragon and the Antichrist. Verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now we're going to return to Revelation chapter, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 51. I'll say it again. Jeremiah 51 verses 7 through 12. Jeremiah 51 verse 7. The second witness. Babylon 
hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, and made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. They're deceived. They don't really know what's going down. Eight, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. She's not going to be. Okay. They're going to try. They'll patch her up. They'll put on band-aids. They'll even pray for her. But it's who they're praying to in error that gets them nowhere. She's going down. Lies, deception, have no future. Verse 9, we should have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. In other words, it stinks all the way to God on the throne. And he's getting tired of it. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Thank God he has given us a platform that goes all the way around the world in nanoseconds. That that word can rain down as the rain of the end times. To warn, to pick up, to heal those that would listen. Make straight the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. That means the middle nations. For his device is against Babylon. That is confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but peace. To destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. You all know when that day of vengeance comes. It's the last day. It's the day of his return. Hey, we're getting there, my friends. We're getting mighty close. You can almost hear the trumpets at this time. All you have to do is watch what's happening around you because you have witness after witness of the nations and what's transpiring. Pay attention and always remember, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is your father and he is always with you. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon and make the watch strong. Babylon, you better get ready. Confusion, you better get it on. You better have a revival, maybe. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. And so it is. Now, we're going to go back now to Revelation 18. I'm going to change chat. Hold your place in Jeremiah. 18, 8. 18th chapter of Revelation, the 8th verse. Second witness. Be ready for it. Verse 8 reads, Revelation 18. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. He's not going to let her go. That day of judgment, and judgment only belongs to God, not you. You can discern, but you cannot judge. His judgment is sure, and, and it is strong, and it is true. Now, return to Jeremiah 51. Pick it up with verse 25 through 29. 25 through 29, Jeremiah 51, second witness. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, that's nation, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. I'm going to take care of business. You can rest assured God will. It's coming. Verse 26. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. She's never going to be built again. God is not going to allow confusion to come over people in mass ever again. 
There'll be a short time at the end of the millennium when we've tried to pull as many as we can from the fire. I'm talking about a deception. Then at that time, if, if they don't want to go with us, hey, we don't need them. Because we're going into a, an eternity of peace and we want no troublemaker. There will be no room for a troublemaker there. God is in control and he will stay there. 27, set ye up a standard in the, um, in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat. You know, um, this means a high holy place. Meaning, that means division. And Ashkenaz. Um, and Ashkenaz uh, meaning um, spreading fire. It's coming. The spreading fire. A point, a captain against her caused the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars, even like that locust army we'll be facing. They're not, they're no problem for us. None whatsoever. Why? God is with us. Do you understand that you and God make a majority? That's why you don't have to fear, and that's why you never have to worry as long as you utilize common sense. And... Um, you're going to have you're going to have little ants come at you, okay? Occasionally, stomp them. Okay, you don't have to put up with it. You know you can take care of that little stuff. It's God. I didn't know that would make that much noise. Okay? <laughs> My number fourteen is kind of they make a racket. Sorry about that. Anyway, t- take care of business, okay? And, and then pray for them, of course. You know, so the brothers will be happy. But the big stuff, God will handle for you. And that's why that he, he will lead you. He will direct you. He will put his words in your mouth. When we're delivered up before the Antichrist, you're not to even premeditate what you'll say. He'll take care of the talking. Okay? And he'll do it exactly as he wishes. And it will be powerful. It is written in Luke 21 that even the gainsayers are convinced by what you say at that moment. Verse 28, Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, that middle land, the captains thereof and all the rulers thereof and all the land of his dominion. Verse 29, And the land shall tremble and sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. It's going to happen. That's God's promise, and God keeps it. Hold your place here. Return now to Revelation chapter 18, verses 4 through 6. Revelation 18, 4 reads, And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. I don't want you to have any part of it. For her sins have reached unto heaven. There's your second witness. God is paying attention. And God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup, which she has filled, filled to her double. Now return to to Jeremiah 51, verse 6. Verse 6 reads, second witness, Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. And you can count on it, my friend. They haven't got a prayer. Why? Because they are out of step with our Heavenly Father. And He's in charge. Now, skip on to the same chapter, 51, verses 45 through 47. 45 through 47, Jeremiah 51. 45 reads, My people, go ye out of the midst of her, 
and deliver you every man his soul from the furious anger of the Lord. That's where you really do not want to be. You do not want to be standing against God. That's a losing conflict. Okay. You're losing coming out the gate. You haven't got a prayer. Love him and be on the right side. Stand against the creature, Satan, and be with your heavenly Father, for he is the victor. Verse 46, And lest your heart faint, And you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come in one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. It's coming, and Father is sending us signs and seasons whereby we can spot, know, and understand. Verse 47, Therefore, behold, the days come, that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Now, return to Revelation 18, verses 20 through 22. 18, 20 through 22. Let's go for it. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets of God, have avenged you, he hath avenged you, you on her. I want you to remember this statement in the Greek is God prevailed. Okay. You might make you a little note of it. It's going to come up again and it's important. It means God prevailed. There's a tense there. It means after the fact. Okay. 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all you're going to have a part in that my friends it is God that executes the command it is God that delivers and you're one of his servants Boy, he, he loves you a lot. Why? Because you're not out in that confused, mixed up, fornicating, spiritually world. You love him and you're true to him. He can count on you. And that makes such a big difference. He's not angry at you. He loves you. Therefore, you never have to worry. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But boy, those that rest in that confusion that allow false teachings and the ways of the world to come over their people, how bad they're going to have it. Verse 22, And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee. And so it is. Uh, And... Now, we're going, hold your place there. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 60 through, uh, chapter 51, verse 63 through 64. 51, remember the millstone. Remember, God has prevailed. It's important. 63 and 64 of Jeremiah 51. 63 reads, And it shall be, When thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it in the midst of the Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Thus far are the words of Almighty God. Now, now catch up with me here, okay? If you take this word and you cast it into the water, what's the water? It's people. Okay. Revelation seventeen fifteen. The waters are people. And when you take this word, the truth, and you cast it into the division line, Euphrates, between confusion and the overcomers. 
it's going to make some changes. It's going to grab some attention. And God begins to speak through us. Those that know what that word, that book says, and the meaning thereof is fantastic. Now, drop back to Jeremiah fifty-one fifty-eight. I know it sounds like I'm running you around. I'm not. It is flowing like honey over the buds of your mind. The actual second witness to the book of Revelation and exactly how it's going down. And if you have noticed, you get a little more information from this prophet Jeremiah than you even do from John in the book of Revelation on that particular subject. You get kind of the details. That's why second witnesses are so very, very important. Verse 58 of Jeremiah 51, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon, broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. Wasting their time. Oh, but you have to do what's politically correct. You understand that. That's not wasting time. Oh, yes, it is. What is morally correct is your stand. You pay no attention whatsoever to what people would call politically correct. Politically correct rips dignity away from all people that take responsibility under Almighty God. You make that stand and you hold to it. Verse 59, the word which Jeremiah, the prophet, commanded Sariah. Listen to this genealogy. It's extremely important to you. The son of Neriah, the son of Maaseah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year, of his reign, and this Sariah was a quiet prince. Do you know who Sariah was? He's Baruch's brother. Okay. Same mother, same father. That's why I want you to pay attention. But do you know what the name Sariah in the Hebrew tongue means? It means God has prevailed. So you have a tense in that. You understand what I mean? In other words, it's happened already. When this transpires, God has prevailed. And that makes it very, very important. Okay. So, Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon. Even all these words that are written against Babylon. That's why they are so important. That's why you should absorb it. That's why you should know and recognize the second witness. 61, and Jeremiah said to Sariah, God has prevailed. When thou comest to Babylon and shalt see and shall read all these words, when you come here, all this writing I have done concerning Babylon, what are you going to do with it? 62, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. It's not going to rise again. 63. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. You're going to take that word and you're going to teach it. You're going to pour it out on the people. I thank God that he has given us a platform that rains down from 22,000 miles in space and hits every square foot of this hemisphere and other places and in nanoseconds all the way around the world. The Word of God poured out concerning battle and where it takes people. You know, for a student of God's Word, there's a real deep message there. I'm, I'm going to take you there. Okay. That's why I made you pay attention in Revelation where I said that means God has prevailed. And now you have Sariah, which means God has prevailed. The brother of Baruch. Do you understand in this same book of Jeremiah what Baruch was told to do? 
I mentioned Anathoth to you, answer to prayer, the city of priests. What happened there? It's important. Turn with me into Jeremiah 32. You can let Revelation and, and you can let um, 51 go. Go to 32. You will notice in verse 7 of chapter 32, the great book of Jeremiah, that we're talking here. By thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. Your kinsman redeemer. Okay. This is very important. This is the priest town, and it is a field that was purchased by who? Verse 12. And I give the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch. Baruch means blessed. Listen to his parents. Same as Sariah. The son of Neriah. Oh, what does Neriah mean? It means lamp of God. I want to say it again to you. It means lamp of God. The son of Maaseah. What, what does that mean? It means the work of Yahweh in the sight of Hanemiel. What does Hanemiel mean? It means which or whom Yahweh graciously gives. So he gives this to you as an inheritance. But you go to Hananiel's, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. You know, we got a title to this land. Well, what are you going to, well, who was it purchased for? God's elect. Okay. It's a deed. Rightful ownership. Doesn't matter who tries to claim it. Rightful ownership belongs to God's elect. Verse 13, And I charged Baruch before them, saying, 14, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, take this deed, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and thus and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may be, that they may continue many days, many years. Why? Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. When? God has prevailed. When God prevails. It's ours. The deed is there, and God himself lets us know in this second witness. Well, why is that important? Well, it's important to know God intends to set his throne there, as it's written in Ezekiel chapter 16. And God's elect are going to have the property that surrounds. Anathoth, what does it mean again? Answer to prayer. It's our answer to prayer. Second witness. You see, God's word is so confusing to some people. And yet when you let it flow, and when you use the witness against witness, there is no confusion, nor is there any room for confusion. It simplifies the word of God where a child can understand and lead the people. That's what's important. We're coming to that time. And... It brings about signs of the season, and we're going to get into that later today. Wow, what a time to live. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for second witnesses. Thank you, Father, for the word that you place in our mouths, Father. Not to hold and to be selfish with, but to share and to teach and to lead, to guide, to help. Father, what a pre pleasure it is to be allowed to serve you in these end times. Thank you, Father.